In 2019, when I was just 14 years old, I saw this 2TB flash drive on Wish for £7. My dad warned me many times that if it looks too good to be true, then it probably is too good to be true. But me, being a complete wazzock, bought it anyway and plugged it into my computer. And it worked. I could put files into it, take files out, open files, and they worked just fine. Until one day when I put a video file in there and everything in the flash drive corrupted. It was all gone and the flash drive was broken. Your boy got scammed. You see, scammers from Wish will buy cheap flash drives made by tiny little Chinese children working in a factory, stick a label on them that says two terabytes, and change the code to make it look like two terabytes on your computer. Then they'll sell it at a slightly higher price so they make profit when you buy it thinking that it's more valuable than it actually is. But fast forwards five years and two terabyte micro SD cards are actually on the market. Only this time, they're not made by tiny little Chinese children. These things are about the size of my thumbnail and hold enough storage for 130 hours of 4K video at 60 frames per second. So how does it fit all that data in such a small space? Well, it may not surprise you that the inside is packed with memory cells. These memory cells hold either a zero or a one. So when you plug the micro SD card into your computer, your computer will translate the zeros and ones into information that a human can understand. Each memory cell is composed of three main parts, the channel, the charge trap and the gate, and in between them is this insulating material which is usually made of silicon. The channel contains many electrons, so when a positive voltage is applied to the gate, the positive charge attracts the negatively charged electrons because opposite charges attract. Some of the electrons will end up in the charge trap because this insulation here is only 75 to 100 atoms thick, which is around 0.02% the thickness of a sheet of paper. This is to allow quantum tunneling to occur, which is where electrons tunnel through the insulation and end up inside the charge trap. Now that electrons are in the charge trap, the memory cell holds a value of zero instead of one. To find the value contained in a memory cell, we need to know whether there are any electrons in the charge trap. So a voltage is supplied to the gate, and if the charge trap is empty, then electrons in the channel will begin to flow. But if the charge trap is full, a higher voltage is required to get the electrons to begin to flow. But instead of having just two states, zero or one for electrons or no electrons, most modern memory cells will have 16 different levels, where level one is completely no electrons and level 16 is as full of electrons that it can get. Meaning that instead of having just one bit, one memory cell can now store four bits. The smallest memory cells are around 20 to 30 nanometers in width and length, and around 40 to 60 nanometers in height. So what is the maximum capacity you could theoretically get in a micro SD card? I never recovered those files from that two terabyte flash drive. I ended up having to throw it away and buy a proper two terabyte hard drive from Toshiba. It costs only 60 pounds and it's a lot bigger than a micro SD card because it uses a hard disk instead of flash memory. They could have probably fit more storage into this hard drive, but it would have costed way more. And for most people, two terabytes is plenty. But what if it's not plenty? What if I want to save every cat video from YouTube onto my phone? What if I want to record my entire life in 4K so that future generations can see how not to live their life? What if I'm part of a group chat on WhatsApp? Let's say that the length and width of each memory cell is 25 nanometers and that the height is 50 nanometers. So the volume of each memory cell is 3.125 times 10 to the minus 23 meters cubed. And the memory chip inside the micro SD card is 10 millimeters by 7 millimeters by 0.8 millimeters. So the volume is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 8 meters cubed. So if we divide the volume of one chip by the volume of one memory cell, we see that we can fit 1.792 times 10 to the 15 memory cells in one chip. But remember that each memory cell stores four bits. So if we multiply by four, we get 7.168 times 10 to the 15 bits, or around 815 terabytes. This is why I hate you mathematicians. You always make up some bullshit that doesn't work and then you try and force us to build it. How do you expect to read and write from all the cells? How do you expect to stop it from overheating? How do you expect to fix a corrupted file? It doesn't work. No one cares about your numbers.
The SD Association defined four categories of micro SD. Standard, which is up to 2 gigabytes, high capacity, which is 2 to 32 gigabytes, extreme capacity, which is 32 gigabytes to 2 terabytes, and ultra capacity, which is 2 terabytes to 128 terabytes. There are currently no ultra SD cards on the market, however, this does suggest that sometime in the future, an 128 terabyte micro SD may become a reality. That's enough to store your entire life as a video in 360p at 15 frames per second with sound. Click this video now if you want to see more. Yeah, and piss off.